Hey everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and we're going to look at some upgrades for your die M2 or M3S, depending on what you have. We'll talk about which will go to what. Um, so there are some upgrades that you can get done. Uh, some of them will work with one gun, some of them will work with the other guns, or I should say all of them will work with one gun, some of them will work with the other. So we have an M3S right here, and the upgrades that are available for the M3S are the new M3 Plus Flex Space Bolt, the fourth gen I-Pipe, as well as the Billy Wing Solenoid Kit. Now, if you have an earlier model, the M2, or the Moss Air M2, um, the parts that will work would be the Gen 4 I-Pipe and the Flex Face Bolt, but the solenoid housing will not work for that particular gun setup. So uh, let's go ahead and head and uh, put this stuff in so you guys can see how it goes in and see the difference between the two parts. So let's pop open the, um, yeah, so let's take the bolt out first. We'll work, we'll work our way through these. So we have, have our bolt right here and our eye pipe. So let's take out our eye pipes. So the eye pipe now, uh, has a different material for the detent system itself and the detents are individual so they are a left and a right before the detent was a solid ring it was one piece that went all the way around and what they found was over time that these would not retain their springiness and they would become loose and sloppy and they would not function as well as they could. So they redesigned it and came out with this fourth gen I pipe, which has individual sides, is made out of a completely different material for the detent itself. Um, doesn't lose its whatever word you want to call it, its elasticity or its springiness. So it's always going to be cradling that paint properly. Plus, it now works better with the smaller paint sizes that we're seeing these days. Paint getting down into the 675 range, this detent system works with that smaller paint style, which is key right now when we've got uh, an influx of smaller bore paint, which is typically what we see everybody shooting right now. Um, so that is super important. So we're just gonna push that over to the side for now. So at least we'll leave it in the frame. There we go. And then we can put this one back in. Now don't force these in. You have, sometimes you have to wiggle them around a little bit. Just make sure that the, the pipe is vertical. Put your finger in there. Don't do this with gas in it or whatever, the bolt in it. Just take your time. And then make sure that it drops all the way in. See a lot of people get them in halfway like that and they just think that it went in there. Make sure you push it all the way back so that it sits all the way inside. All right, that's easy enough. The bolt, easy as well. It's not a hard changeover. So we can see the difference between our bolt tips right there. This has a open tip as well as a flexible rubberized front to it. This has got a hard metal for surface to it, which upon impact could cause to breakage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unscrew the bolt. We are not unscrewing the cap off of here. We're not uh, the back side of the can. We're not taking any of that apart, just the front part of the bolt. And then we're gonna push the bolt out the back. So here is our original bolt. And if, you have, if you're doing this in an M2, it will look different as well than this one. All right, so let's move this over to the side. There we go. I'm just looking to see if I'm missing any important information. All right, so to put this back in, we're just gonna slide it back through the front. Now this one can be a little stiffer to get through just because of the shape of the front, but if you just give it a little bit of force, 
Uh, make sure that you're pushing straight through, that you don't have it off angle and you're just going to jam it inside there. And then screw it back together. There we go. Now, what I did not do as I put this together is I didn't re-lube it because I don't have any up here and I don't want to make a big mess of this bolt because this is a new one. But you will want to grease any O-rings that are on the bolt, uh, any of the surfaces that are going to be sliding across O-rings. Um, so basically on this, as you put it in or before you put it in, you're going to want to grease this O-ring here, this surface, this surface, and then the inside surface of the bolt right here. This part is riding against this orange O-ring at the front. This back section is riding internally inside of here. So it's riding against an O-ring that is inside there. This inside surface is riding on this O-ring right here. So any of those surfaces, make sure they're greased up. Anywhere that there's gonna be movement, make sure you give it grease. Put that right in. Done and done. Make sure that your eye pipe, what I did when I put the bolt in right here is that I wanted to push the eye pipe forward. So make sure your eye pipe stays in position. Usually when you put your bolt, your barrel on, it'll set that eye pipe into the proper spot. But just in case it doesn't, be aware of that. All right, so our last thing is our new manifold. So we're gonna take our grips off. And we're going to take our front foregrip off. We need to be able to get to the frame screws to pop them off. It's the one Allen key I didn't take out yet. Be careful of the wiring of your charging, your wireless charger. Don't pull on it or anything like that. If you feel more comfortable, you can remove the battery, remove the charging port, and just work with it without those on there. It's up to you. But seeing as though we're not really working with the frame, I'm just gonna put that to the side, and then we're gonna focus on this section right here. So the, what we're looking at right here, we're going to replace this right here. Um, the pilot valve and all of the stuff that is here will remain, but the housing we are going to replace. So what we need to do on this one is we need to remove the solenoid. Now the solenoid connects right back here. So this wire that runs back to here is our solenoid wire. This is our eye wire and you can see how the eye wires run along the side right here. When we go to put the solenoid back in we have to be careful we don't crush those wires. We don't want to ruin anything inside there. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is unscrew this first. I'm going to lift the solenoid out, and that will give me a little bit more slack on my wiring so that I can unplug it. I recommend doing it in that order. I probably could get this pick on here and lift this up right now. Maybe even get it by my fingertips and wiggle it out. But you never know. Each gun is going to be slightly different in the amount of space that the wiring has. So uh, just be careful. If, you, if you've got enough room where you can pop that out, go ahead and do it right now, it's okay. If you don't and you're worried about it, take the solenoid out first so that you can get a little bit more wire because the wire is tucked down underneath here right now. So you actually have more length than you, what you can see. Um, and then pop it out from there. All right, we do not need to remove this board that's around here. So all we need to do is disconnect or Unscrew first these four screws that are right here. One, two, three, four. All right, so now we are going to lift the solenoid out. Now, if you are working in a place that is not controlled, like in your room or in a table or something like that, you're at the field for some reason doing a solenoid switch, I don't know, um, I would recommend that you take the screws out one by one and you set them to the side. 
you could leave them just sitting in there and lift the whole thing out and hope that you don't drop them all over the place, but I wouldn't recommend that either. All right, so we can take that out. We'll set this to the side for now. So this gun is brand new right here. This is uh, right out of our gun room downstairs. So I really shouldn't need to replace the gasket, the solenoid gasket. But I'm just going to show you what comes in the kit here. So you know what's going to go where. So you're going to get four new screws, which are the screws we took out. Our solenoid gasket, which would fit right down here at the bottom. Like that. And then this little gasket, which I will show you where it goes. It goes inside here. But I'm not really going to use this one. I'm not going to grease it all up either. So that's what that is for. Uh, if you are replacing one that has had good use or uh, is having a leaking issue or whatever it may be, definitely replace the gasket. There's no reason not to replace it. All right, so first things first, we need to remove our pilot valve off of the solenoid housing. So there are two screws here and here. We're going to remove those. It is not the one sitting down here, which is on the silver housing. We don't want to take that one out yet. We just want the two screws that are holding the pilot valve onto the housing. Then we can remove those. Now there is the gasket on the pilot valve. You don't need to replace that one. All right, so from here, now we've exposed another screw sitting underneath the pilot valve. Once we get the pilot valve off, now we can remove this screw and this one. On the side of the housing, right here, you will see that there is a, a dash mark right here. And it goes through the connection between the two pieces. This is just a reminder that when you put it back together to line these two pieces up so that you don't rotate it 180 degrees and put it on backwards. All right, so that's gonna go on here. Now, once this pops off, the um, O-ring that we talked about earlier, sometimes it will come off and sometimes it will stay on, but it's right here. It's the same one right there. And this O-ring fits right there. Okay, so on the new housing, you have the same spot right there, and that's where our new O-ring, our new gasket, I should say, it's not really an O-ring, it's a gasket, would fit. Okay, so now what we need to do is to remove the spool and spring that is inside of the old housing. So depending on what tools you have, if you have a very thin pair of needle nose, you could stick them down in here and get a hold of it and grab it and pull it out. I have not seen too many thin needle nose pliers that are thin enough to get inside there and actually get a hold of it. So what I do is I take a pick and I come from this side over here and I push against the spool and push it out. On that side of the spool, you can't damage it because you're pushing on the hard end of the spool here or the spring end of the spool. If for some reason you couldn't get, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to do it this way, but if you couldn't, you would have to come in through the top right here and actually push the spool where the O-rings are out. And I don't recommend that. You could damage the spool. You could damage the O-rings on the spool. Not a good idea. I mean, if, if that's your only resort, then that's what you have to do. I don't recommend it. It's very easy. There's a cutout right here in the back. You get inside there. You, you can actually see it pop out when I get in here. And I can even just push on the spring and pop it out. Watch. Boing. Boing. And that's going to come right out like this. So now this, we're done with. Next, we would take this and grease the we would, first of all, I would clean it. I would look over the spool, make sure that everything looks okay, that all the rings look okay. I would wipe it down, I would re-grease it, 
I would grease the inside of the new manifold, and then this would go inside. Yeah. We would take this silver housing with the new, new gasket and put it on there. Like that. And then we would take this and put it on, making sure to line up the hash mark with the existing one. Take our screws, put them in. These ones right here, we're going to just snug them up. We're not going to wrench on them. Make them tight, but not destructive tight. Now we're going to put our pilot valve back on, and there is only one way that the pilot valve will fit. There is a little bar right here, which only allows the pilot valve to fit on this way. It will not fit this way if you try to put it on. So you can't screw this one up. Well, you shouldn't be able to screw this one up. I'm going to then tighten these down. Now I'm only going to go to where I feel it touch. Then I'm going to do the other side, go to where I feel it touch. And then I'm going to give it the slightest amount of tightening. Just a little toy. Feel it resist. Feel it resist. If you over tighten these ones on the pilot valve, it is very easy to crack the housing that the screw goes through. So this one cracks very easily. This one, not so much. It's a little bit thicker over here, but this one I have seen crack plenty of times. So just where you feel it stop, give it a little bit of a snug, and then leave it alone. Do not over tighten that one. All right, so from here, we're just gonna go ahead and put this back in. Our wiring, if we really didn't monkey around with it too much, should still hold the shape of what it looked like when it was installed previously. So we're going to tuck that down in there. We're going to make sure that our eye wiring, which is running along the side right here, is out of the way. That it is not, hasn't fallen down and is going to be crushed when we put the, the solenoid back in. So what I usually do is I kind of come in at an angle. I drop the, the far side from where I'm sitting right now. So this side, I drop it in first and then I slide it over to make sure that those eye wires cannot get underneath it. And then I will go ahead and put my screws back in. If they're new screws, use the screws you had before. If they are old, replace them with the new ones that came with your, your new manifold. Now I'm just gonna put these down at the bottom. I am not gonna tighten this up. I don't wanna mark it up or anything like that. I just want to show you where it goes like that. Plug in our solenoid. And then we can finish it up by reattaching our frame. And that's it, guys. I'm not going to screw the frame back on. You guys know where that goes and how to put your grips back on. But that's it. That's the installation of the upgrade parts for either the M2 or the M3S to make it um, like an M3 Plus. And I will reiterate the, um, the bolt replacement and the I-pipe replacement will work on both versions, M2 and M3S but the manifold that we just installed will only work in the M3S, will not work in the M2. Um, so just remember that when you're ordering. So uh, upgrades for the M series, the I shouldn't say the M series, the M2 or the M3S or the M2 Mosser, they're available through the website, orders now through ansgear.com.